Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, phase equilibria. Specifically, let's look at the uh, derivation of the lever rule. So lever rule is a very important equation in phase equilibria and allows us to determine how much of one phase there is in, um, in a two-phase region. So let's, um, let's start off by <clears throat> just drawing a portion of a simple isomorphous system. So say we've got a, a simple, um, you know, gen a hypothetical AB binary, two component system, <clears throat> and it's isomorphous, that means complete solubility um, <clears throat> of B and A and A and B. At the high temperatures, of course, we'd have a, a liquid. At the low temperature, we'd have solid. You know, of course, it's often, it's typically, by convention, we name the solid phase with a Greek letter, but I'm just going to leave it general in this case. Instead of putting alpha, I'm just going to put solid. And then we've got this two-phase region um, <clears throat> in the middle. You know, this whole region in here that I'm just shading in there contains both uh, liquid and solid. So upon cooling through, <clears throat> Uh, through that two-phase region for a certain composition, let's call it C0. If we start up at the high temperature, we heat it up enough, the atoms have enough kinetic energy, they're all moving around in the liquid uh, state of matter. We cool down, we cross through the liquidus, enter into the two-phase liquid plus solid region, and then we continue to cool down, cross through the solidus until eventually we're completely solid. But what we want to look at is we want to understand, well, what's happening right in here as we cross through the two-phase liquid plus solid? And at a particular temperature in there, <clears throat> could we you know, fully describe the system by describing how much of the system was liquid and how much was solid? So that's what we're after here. So <clears throat> let's just take a look then at you know, a little region of that two-phase uh, part of the, the, the diagram where we've got, and I'll just blow up the part that we're interested in. High temperature, we've got liquid. Um, at the lower temperature here, we've got solid. And so this is liquid plus solid. And we're solidifying, we're cooling down through that region. So of course, as you know, if you stop at a particular temperature, you can draw a tie line. And the tie line will give us a composition on one side where the tie line intercepts this boundary. That's the composition of the liquid. And it'll give us a composition on the other side where it intercepts the, the in this case, the, the solidus. And that gives us the composition of the solid. And just to complete the story, our overall comp uh, composition is C0. <clears throat> so, what we want to do now is we want to say, well, how can we describe how much of the system is either in the solid or in the liquid phase? If there was 100, uh, you know, if it's one kilogram, for example, is there 30% of that, is, is there th 300 grams that are solid or 300 grams are liquid? You know, or is there something, is there some room, is it 50-50? Let's see if we can figure that out. <clears throat> so what we need to do is uh, we just start with a simple mass balance. Let's do a mass balance on component B. Okay, just this general system, there's component B. Let's do a mass balance on that. It has to go into, uh, component B has to go into either liquid or solid. Can't go anywhere else. It can't disappear from existence, so it's got to be there. So let's just do a mass balance on that, and we'll see from that we'll follow the lever rule. <clears throat> so the um, mass B total, right, that's all the, all the B, all component B that you put into the system, <clears throat> has to be <clears throat> spread across mass B in the liquid and mass of B uh, in the solid. That's the only two places it can go. That's the only two components. Uh, sorry, two phases. I made my, you know, a common mistake there. Components are different from phase. There's two phases, liquid and solid. I apologize for that little slip of the tongue. So <clears throat> um, <clears throat> 
how can we determine the mass of B in the liquid? Well, if we, if we knew the mass of the liquid and we multiplied by the composition of the liquid, that would actually provide the mass of B in the liquid because by convention, the composition is expressed in weight percent of the component on the right, in this case, weight percent B. So if we multiply by the mass of one phase by the composition of that phase in weight percent B, it's going to give us how much B there is in that existing in that phase. And again, we can do the same thing over here, mass of the solid times the composition of the solid. <coughs> And I'll just write this out here again uh, for completeness. Now, what we can do is we can go and divide both sides by the total mass of the system. OK, we're just going to divide both sides by total mass. And we should uh, recognize a couple of, uh, of terms. So, I mean, so for, first of all, what is mass B divided by mass total? Well, it's nothing more than the overall composition, isn't it? So we can replace this now with C naught. That's the amount that's expressed in weight percent B. It's the fraction of B relative in the total. And then just mass of liquid divided by the mass total is, well, that's one of the things we're after, isn't it? It's, it's a fraction of the total that is one phase or the other. So we could call that <coughs> the, um, the weight fraction liquid, W sub L, multiplied by composition liquid. And then again, over here, What's the mass of the solid divided by the total mass? Well, that's, that's just exactly the, the weight fraction solid. So we're, we're getting somewhere now. We're actually, we've got a pretty good, we're getting to a pretty good point here. Um, <clears throat> so really now, it's just a, just a matter of a little bit more housekeeping. Well, we can say <clears throat> that we know the um, weight fraction of the liquid plus the weight fraction of the solid, but there's a fraction, it's only two, com two phases, that has to equal one. Because there's no other phases, liquid and solid. It's a two-phase region. We, we said that over here, two phase. So the fraction of the total that is liquid plus the fraction of the total that's solid has to equal one. Or we could express it in terms of, uh, you know, say just weight fraction of liquid is equal to one minus weight fraction of the solid. <coughs> So then I'll rewrite the equation. C naught equals 1 minus weight fraction of the solid plus weight fraction of the solid times Cs. <coughs> or C naught equals, oops, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. Did that to see if you were paying attention. OK, uh, so CL is what I missed off. My apologies. And then weight fraction is solid. OK, good. So there we go. Now I can <clears throat> multiply this out. Move CL uh, over. OK, let's see if uh, I've done that correctly. I believe I have. So now we've got weight fraction of the solid equal to C naught minus CL over CS minus CL. So this is the lever rule. This is the lever rule. <clears throat> and it tells us that if we want to find out 
how much of the system exists as the liquid, we have to take, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I derived it for the solid. Uh, I'll show you in a second uh, what it would be for the other side. But here's solid. If we want to find out how much of the system is solid, <clears throat> we take the opposite side of the tie line, that is C0 minus CL, divided by the total, CS minus CL. If I, wanted to, if I had derived it for the other side, of course, it has to be 1 minus that. It's only it's either this side or the other side. So weight fraction of the liquid would be the opposite side divided by the total. Always remember with the lever rule, you take the opposite side of the tie line, opposite from the phase you're interested in. If I'm interested in the solid, I take this side. If I was interested in the liquid, I would have taken the other side as the numerator and the total length of the tie line in the denominator. Now, I derived that for the two-phase uh, two two liquid plus solid. But of course, I could have derived it for, in fact, any two-phase uh, region. It could have been alpha plus beta. Um, it could have been you know, delta plus epsilon, you name it. That same derivation, based on a mass balance, could have been done for any two-phase region. Thank you.